Derek Wallace here. It is Tuesday, November 16th, about 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I've been here for about an hour uh, or so. Uh, you can see it's still out the window. It's still dark, but uh, this is what my day looks like. So I decided uh, that I would come talk to you guys about what's going on at the Odyssey Project. By now you know that we've been uh, pushing a fundraiser that's specifically focused on Black Man Lead, which is, which is a rite of passage initiative for young black males ages four uh, to 30. Uh, the rite of passage actually takes, the, uh, the completion of rite of passage takes place at 13, but we continue to work with them on through the age of 30. Uh, to provide them with the tools and support they need to become productive uh, men in our community. What I want to talk to you about now are some things that we are focusing on. Right now we're focusing on teaching them a number of different skills. One is coding. The other is um, uh, professional writing and a couple of other skills. And one of the things that we definitely need are computers. Uh, we are trying to raise money to buy them. That's not going well. So what we're doing is we're also going to ask people if they have laptops that are in good condition and have at least Windows 10 uh, that if they want to donate them, they can send them. And the address to which they can send them is going to be in the description box. Also, uh, if you want to give financially, you can. Uh, the information is going to be in the description box. Finally, another way that you can give is through sponsoring a space in my 25th book, which I am currently writing on uh, the history of our quest for black wealth in the United States the things we've had to overcome and face, the things that are in front of us, and what must be done to achieve economic power. Uh, those of you who have already sponsored space in the book, thank you. Um, but if you want to sponsor space in the book, 50% uh, of those proceeds will be directly uh, designated for the work we're doing with young boys. Uh, the other will offset publishing. Um, so. Again, the way you do that is you just go to the link to uh, sponsor a space in the book. And I, what I love about this is when you sponsor this space, what you're doing is you're going to have your name in the book and you get to pay tribute to someone or something. You can pay tribute to any person you want to. You can even celebrate your own life accomplishment, but your name will go in the book and underneath it, what you want to celebrate or who you want to celebrate will be in the book. And there's no limit. There's no uh uh, limit or minimum of what you can give. You can give, um, you can sponsor with 50 cent. Your name's going in the book and you're going to get a paragraph to celebrate and uh, pay tribute to whoever or whatever you want to. Uh, now, obviously, the more that you contribute, the more things that you'll get. Um, obviously, uh, it's, it's all going to be in the description box, but um, a sponsorship of $25 gets your name in the book along with a paragraph and a signed copy of the book. $75 uh, gets you a certain thing. I know that at $100, you get your name in the book. Uh, you get a dedicated page, meaning your own page. Uh, with $250, you get your dedicated page and you get to submit a portrait. Uh, so those are the things and those are some of the ways we're um, trying to get this fundraiser off and going. Uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing with them, we need books, we need training material. Uh, we need to cover the cost of one-on-one -on -one interventions. Uh, I've had two requests on my desk, well, not physically on my desk, but in my email when I got here this morning. Um, I've got mothers asking me to check on their sons uh, uh, who are incarcerated and they believe wrongly. Whether wrongly or not, they're not getting the proper representation they need and you know on and on uh we need to train providers people who are going to work with these kids need to be trained uh temporary emergency housing is something else that we're trying to work on for children and women 
um, although this is for um, black men lead predominantly, you know that my wife Mary and I also runs Restoring Ghetto, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, and one of the things that we definitely need to focus on as an organization is ensuring that there's emergency uh, housing for women and children who are in danger. Uh, also, uh, working with uh, organize, other organizations to combat recidivism and other elements and components of mass incarceration. These are just some of the things that we're working on, and I'll be coming back to you, but I had to stop by this morning while it was fresh on my mind because once I get going, there's so much that flows through my mind. I didn't want it to be later in the day. I wanted it to be this morning uh, so that I can go ahead and get in front of you guys. Look, we can talk all day about what needs to be done in the community. We can talk all day about what's wrong. We can point fingers at each other, but at the end of the day, we're gonna to have to gird up. We're gonna to have to square our shoulders and we're gonna to have to get in the field and do the work. We're gonna to have to rescue some minds because there's a battle for the mind of our children and we're losing it. And that's on us. We can talk about white supremacy all we want to, but uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, by a very polar polarizing person, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, is that white supremacy is absolutely nothing without black compliance. And black compliance isn't simply saying, I'll go along with it. Black compliance is just like silent condemnation. Black compliance can be uh, something as simple as not taking action. You are by inactivity becoming compliant. You are by a lackadaisical approach to holistically educating our youth, being compliant. Anything that assists the protocols, plans, schemes, and machinations of this racial caste system is, in essence, compliance. And so it's our responsibility to do the things that are necessary to overcome these obstacles. And this is what this is about. So. Whether you want to do a sponsorship, whether you want to donate computers, uh, we definitely need, um, right now, uh, 50, 50 computers. Uh, we need uh, laptops for the kids, and we need a couple of desktops uh, for the people who are going to be working the programs, uh, especially in the research department. But we need uh, both desktops and laptops, and this is going to offset some of the stuff that I would normally have to uh, come out of pocket for. And so this is what we're asking those who are willing, do so. Those who aren't, you know, do what you do. Um, but we've got work to do. Uh, we've got work to do. And I'm going to say this uh, because it's been sort of fr frustrating for me uh, over the f last few months with the lack of support. But I'm going to say this and I'm going to be clear about it. If you need help, reach out. Uh, you know, my goal is uh, to not turn anyone away. I may not be able to get to you immediately and directly, but I'm going to gauge the severity and urgency of what's going on, and I'm going to prioritize it, and I'm going to do everything I can uh, within reason to ensure your help. If there's someone else I can get involved, I will. Uh, but what I do want is some, I want my people to have a place that they can go. Uh, for the things that they're facing in this community that they feel is too big for them or they don't know where to go or they don't feel they have a voice. So with that being said, despite uh, uh, the, the lack of support, uh, continue to send those requests, continue to send those emails, continue to reach out. Um, and we're going to do everything we can uh, to assist you. On that note, uh, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution is you. It's necessary you take responsibility for it, that you make it happen, that you don't give up, that you don't take any objection or disappointment or defeats personally, that you keep on keeping on, that you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And here's something you've got to resolve. Say this to yourself every day. It's not over until I win. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing good. Look, I'm going to get right to the point. I need to have a very 
uh, serious uh, one-way conversation uh, with you. Some of you guys have followed me for as long as 10 or 11 years, uh, which spans the entire uh, time I've had a presence on social media in one place or another. And uh, some of you I have developed relationships with, some of you I have worked with personally. Uh, others of you have come along at different points and junctures uh, doing this journey. And you have been a part and seen what I do or you have had the opportunity to listen and learn and share and do so many other things. Uh, those of you who have been around for a while know that I have passions outside of teaching, outside of writing, outside of lecturing, and outside of doing what I do for a living in business. I have a passion, and that passion is in the community. That passion is in providing solutions and actually taking action. Uh, it would be hard for me to talk if there wasn't some action in direct correspondence to what I say. And to give you an example, I talk a lot about family. I talk a lot about our children. I talk a lot about protecting our women. I talk a lot about giving space to our men to be human uh, and to admit that they need help. I talk about mental health and I'm involved in the community in every last one of those ways. There's not a literally, literally, there's not a day that someone isn't referring someone to me for services. There's not a day that a mother, a black mother, doesn't come to me concerned about her black son. Uh, there's oftentimes black men are coming to me and asking for counsel. And those things that I can do on the spot that don't have a large demand for resources, they're just done, not even thought about. I talk to people every day in some pretty precarious situations and give them insight and, 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 and uh, share with them resources. Uh, I support other people who are doing it in, in the community, uh, in spirit, in, in co consultation, and in finance. Um, and I've been doing this for years. Uh, but there has been a great influx uh, for people in need, uh, people suffering from trauma, from childhood experiences, people who are struggling with not knowing what to do about wayward sons, and so, so many other things. I've been telling you guys for a while that we are in the middle of a fundraiser. The Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, uh, and uh, a secondary, the Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, but Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Program is in the middle of a fundraiser, and literally where we haven't raised any funds. Uh, let me tell you what we need in specific and what I'm going to be seeking. We need to raise a minimum of $25,000 by the end of this month. And I'm going to get right to the point of what that $25,000 is for. We need computers. Uh, we need computers uh, to use as teaching tools. We need computers to use as management tools. We need computers uh, to be able to provide resources that these young uh, children, um, and the children that will be using the computers will be between the ages of 9 and 18. Um, but the uh, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative actually starts at the age of 4. We are focused on the proper socialization of black boys, but we need computers, we need books. We need books because books take the mind and guide the mind. We need to train them to be readers, uh, not just tell them to read, we need to train them to be readers. We need to engage them with specified material that we control so that we know what's feeding their mind. We need training material. Also, there's a cost to one-on-one -on -one interventions, which I do a lot of, uh, and we need more resources. So we also need to be training providers. We need to train people who are willing to actually work with people. We need to do that. 
Uh, we need uh, resources for temporary uh, emergency housing, and this is for all kids, male and female and women. Uh, we also are uh, an organization that has been for years focused on uh, fighting mass incarceration uh, and recidivism. And the way that we do that by one is dealing with the school to prison pipeline where our boys are alienated in the academic process as early as five years old um, and alienated. And we talked about this. If you want to see it, we talked about it on the last uh, segment of the teachers with Dr. Uh, Cleet Ladd about how that's done. And we want to interrupt that. We want to get ahead of it. We want to give our boys a fighting chance. On the recidivism side, it's about meeting them when they come out or starting to work with them while they're still in to prepare them to be productive and functional in society so that they don't trickle back into the lifestyles that landed them, landed them, lifestyles and the thinking, more importantly, that landed them into the system and another what another thing we are battling in our community and i have a mother that i'm bringing on this weekend who lost her son in ferguson of all places to violence and her 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 statement to me when i spoke with her this morning was we need to stop saying black lives matter number one is she's not a fan of the organization uh black lives matter with good reason but she needs. To, she said that we as a people need to stop saying black lives matter and start saying black lives matter when a police kills a black man because she said black boys are dying in the hood every day and nobody says a word and she's absolutely right and that's because we don't have a unified front to deal with this and so another major focus matter of fact black men lead started with me doing research on how to confront violence in the black community and discovering what's the leading causes and catalysts behind violence at a very microscopic level. What's driving it? Not, not you could say gang violence, but gang violence is literally a result or a symptom of something. We need to talk about what the cause is and it's the lack of proper racial socialization. And that's what uh, the rite of passage element in Black Men Lead is about. We need your support. We need to raise this money uh, by the end of the month. We need to have these resources in play. There are so many people who are in need of what we do, and there simply aren't the resources. There are so many people in need of, let me turn this around. I want you to be able to see my face. There are so many people who need what I literally have the expertise to give, but I'm one person. I can't do it by myself. I literally had to sit down with my interventionist because I'm so stretched to the tilt of what I'm trying to do in, uh, on so many different uh, fronts. And literally, they were saying to me, you can't do it by yourself. Stop trying to do it by yourself. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. Uh, no matter how much you want to do it, no matter how much you're passionate about it, you're going to have to solicit help. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can do things. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can pay for things. You're going to have to solicit help in people who can sit down and help you strategize. You're going to have to do that. And so this is me sitting down and becoming even more invested in this. I've talked about it, and I tell you it needs to be done. You know, and my thing is, this isn't asking or forcing anybody to do anything. I'm talking to the people who are truly, genuinely, authentically concerned about the plight of our people and concerned about those in the community that don't have the access and opportunities that they have. Knowing that there are people out there that don't even know they have choices. There are literally people out there that think the life that they're living is the only life they'll ever have. And there's not a lot of people out there telling them different. And they need to know. And we need to be in the minds of these young boys as early as possible so that we can structure their thinking. They're thinking towards their future. They're thinking towards themselves and others who look like them. They're thinking towards the fairer sex and how they should be treated, how they should be handled. The, 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 the thinking towards what the responsibilities of manhood really is. 
what really are and how, how do you function in them? What does being a provider mean? What does being a protector mean? What does being a physical, emotional, and uh, spiritual covering look like? What does being out in front in the community be, look like? All of these things are a part of the program. All of these things are necessary. We can talk until we're blowing the face about what we need in the community, but there has to be a structured, a structured, deliberate effort. When I talk about deliberate, I, 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 I like to define it because a lot of people hear it and keep moving. Deliberate means that there is a conscious and intentional focus in thought and action to achieve a goal. We've got to be deliberate in it. We got to literally be thinking the right thing and moving in the right way simultaneously doing something to change it. We're not preparing our kids. We're not holistically educating our kids. And I've told you in, in both in the miseducation of black youth in America and in um, academic apartheid that the true definition of education is the holistic preparation and empowerment of youth to go out into a world as adults and not only compete but uh, win, compete in a world that's hostile towards them and win. That's what we're up against. And that's why we consistently find ourselves at the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder. That's why we consistently, consistently find ourselves in last place in every statistical category that matters as far as social standing, uh, political influence, political power, social uh, 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 sufficiency, and so many other ways. It's because we're not preparing our youth. We're sitting up and hoping they can go out into a world half prepared, predominantly educated by a system that does not take their best interests into mind. And they go out and they fail miserably. Even when they think they're succeeding, they're failing. Why? Because they are not preparing the next generation and they are not in a situation where they are in control of their own destiny. They are still hoping and waiting and looking to appease someone else so that they can have a piece of their pie. And we are responsible for doing better. So once again, I'm asking you to look in the description box. There's going to be two links and then there will be the organization's cash app handle. I'm asking you, if we're going to do this, that needs to be on average. We are what? 19 days away from the end of the month. So there needs to be a little over $1,200 or so a day minimum. You know, and I, there are people out here that actually will watch this video that could do this by themselves. And I, and I would love to see you stand up. I would love to see that one sponsor come forth and say, let's do the work. I would also like to see some people who have the ability to do some of the things I mentioned step up and be a part of the solution. Because, again, I'm literally engaging all of the needs of people who need interventions in whatever way it is. It's me. And literally, when you carry that, when you're dealing with some, when, when everything you're dealing with with, the, with with these interventions has something to do with trauma, it takes a toll on you because I'm an empath. I'm a person that actually cares. That's what makes me as good as I am in dealing with people. I'm not just out there running them through steps. I, I, I can feel what they're going through. And I feel it in a way that the average person doesn't because I'm not just an emotional empath. I'm a spiritual empath. I'm literally connected when I deal with people. That's why so many of my videos are so passionate because I can connect, because I'm there. And so I am right now challenging you to not only watch this video, to not only give, but to share this video with at least four other people that you believe think like you. And if you don't have four other people that think like you, you need to get with me anyway because that is a part of our problem. We are surrounded by a circle that doesn't see us in the future that we need to be in. We are living around people who are happy where they're at. And that has to change. Uh, so after you watch this video, share it with four people who think like you and ask them to match your gift. Then press the like button, press the share button, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because 
we are really going to start bringing you a bunch of stuff like the next few weeks. We're going to deal with uh, this uh, beautiful grandmother.